The term free economics was invented to describe the point at which the spread of nuclear energy would make electricity too cheap to meter. We have yet to reach that point in the energy industry, but a similar scenario is not far from reality in other ones. There are several companies that offer their services without charging in any way the final user, like several social networks or numerous digital services. How can companies offer something for free? Let's consider a simple example. Several banks offer their credit cards completely for free to the end users. If we deep in the analysis of this example, we can see how the credit card provider offers a service to the end users, but also to merchants like restaurants and shops, creating a platform that enables a direct transaction between the two groups, and the service is usually paid through an interchange fee kept on the merchant side. This is an example of transaction to side market, a market structure that enables to offer free products through subsidization. Other traditional examples of two-sided market are game console, shopping malls, and services based on the concept of matching. Another example of two-sided market is the newspaper industry. On one hand, there are the readers, which are subsidized through the existence of a second group, the advertisers, which pay the platform provider to reach the readers. In this case, the platform does not allow a direct transaction among the two sides. Indeed, it is a non-transaction to side market, where the reader's eyeballs are sold to advertisers in a client as a target perspective, represented through the green arrow. This market structure is now being challenged by an extremely relevant trend, the diffusion of smartphones, which allows companies to gather a huge amount and variety of data through the sensors embedded in the smartphones. This research is empirically grounded in the mobile app industry, focusing on 14 mobile apps in the health and fitness category, which have been analyzed through their privacy policies in order to understand if and how they can leverage the gathered big data. Our research highlights three different models that companies can rely on to capture the value embedded in big data through a two-sided structure. In the first one, enhanced advertising, the data gathered from the first side are provided to the second one, where we can still find the advertisers. Indeed, this data can be used to offer highly contextualized advertising messages that may look like the answer to what users are searching in that precise moment. In this way, the first side is not just a target, but it is a source of value that can be captured, introducing a second strategy, called client as a source, and represented through the orange arrow. In the second model, e-ethnography, we can see how companies can use the data gathered from users to get insights on their behaviors that can be useful in other units within the same company. This feature modified the model without having a direct revenue stream from the second side and losing the client as a target strategy. The last model, data trading, is based on the identification of third parties that see in the data gathered a huge value and can be interested in buying or exchanging data for different purposes. In this final case, the entire model is based on a client as a source strategy, introducing once again a revenue stream from the second side. We focused on the health and fitness category, but the results of this research may be expanded to several other categories and industries, such as social networks, physical products, and other digital services. This research offers a first link between the two-sided market structure and the phenomenon of big data, relying on the non-transaction model to highlight a way to capture the value embedded in big data, defining three different strategies and expanding the traditional view on two-sided markets from a client as a target to a client as a source perspective. This research has been carried out by Daniel Trabucchi, Tommaso Buganza and Elena Pellizzoni at the School of Management of Politecnico di Milano and published on the second issue of Research Technology Management in 2017. To get further details on the research in terms of literature background and references, methodology and insights derived from the case studies analysis, you can refer to the published article or directly contact the authors through the link in the description of this video.